Hey, it's Randy Scott with KSLX representing Avnet this year for the 16-inch softball tournament. B2B, all the CEOs are here as well as our sports celebrity. I love talking to Dan Bickley because he knows so much about this game. 16-inch softball, tell me your thoughts. Well, for me, this is like a slice of home. Back in Chicago on days like today, on Saturdays, it's very, very common to gather a group together go down to the softball fields and bring beer and hot dogs and play 16 inch softball. It's, it really is a Chicago institution. So for me, it's really kind of, it's kind of like a slice of home for me. And it's, it's just really, really cool that Avnet has taken an idea like a 16 inch softball tournament, turned it into something this big, turned it into a festival. And it just, it keeps getting better every year. And I love it. It's great. It's a unique opportunity to sh give a little show back to the community that we care, we're, we're here, we're human. Um, you know, we're not always in suits and ties. It's not always about business. It's also about having some fun and uh, showing teamwork at a different level. That's what I really enjoy. Absolutely, and benefiting charity. Absolutely, and benefiting to JDRF and Miracle League for this one, which is a couple of very soft spots in our hearts for those. It's our co-ed championship, and once again, Al, Crunch Time from Avnet has found their way to the finals against Vienna, but Crunch Time looking for their fifth win in the last six years. They... Um, Won one game against the Cardinals, which was unbelievable. They were losing by four runs, came back with five, and uh, sent them home pack, and they were, they were stunned. That's right. They were an overwhelming felt favorite. If you watch the game, the Arizona Cardinals, all their athletes, all their speed, and they had some great females on the team handling the outfield. They got off to a 4 nothing lead, but crunch time would not be denied. They came back with five to win and make it to the finals yet again. And who are they facing? The underdog Vienna team. And from what I understand, they are a newly formed team. Yeah, they, they, had, they all got uh, their name tags. That's right. Okay, well, we have Ken Sabaki, who we know very well on the mound for crunch time, and leading off for Vienna will be the... Second baseman or short center fielder, Paul Denham. He's a huge Cub fan. That's a good thing. <laughs> he, he roots for some guy, team on the white on the other side. What's of the really spot. funny is I just won a pro-am at the R.R. Donnelly with A.J. Persitsky, the catcher for that team. And over to first, and Denham is retired. Well, quickly, we go to Candace Brook batting second. She'll be playing shortstop for Vienna this afternoon. I think I psyched out Paul. Sorry, Paul. Sorry, Paul. Sorry, Paul. We've got to give him some Comiskey vibes from here on out. And Candace, she lines us down the third base line. Could be trouble, but a great catch as the left fielder, Luis Montanez, makes the catch. Two down quickly for Vienna. I don't know, Al, I think it's important for Vienna to get on the board early against crunch time because they are always dangerous. Fly ball to right center field. Underneath it for crunch time is Jay Lamont, and he makes the catch. So that was Levi Breck, uh, Brock. Uh, what are you doing, Jay? Okay. And that was a great play. Great catch. And that will retire the side. We go to the bottom of the first with absolutely no score as Aaron May takes the mound for Vienna. We go to the bottom of the first inning. It'll be crunch time's first at bat and first time facing Aaron May from Vienna. No score in the top of the first and here comes the crunch time team led off by shortstop Chase Fisher. And the first pitch from May is inside for a ball. Quickly two and one. Remember, we start with a one and one count here in the championship game. And now it's quickly three and one.
And that's going to be a quick walk for Fisher. That'll bring up the right center fielder for crunch time, Tracy Brunick. Pitcher's not using a glove. A little unusual for Very today. Chicago, right? Yeah. That's the way to do it. But in a game like this, you uh, probably And why are we going to second base on this? You're not supposed to walk, gentlemen. Oh, I get it. Here comes Tracy Brunick. And it's a line drive down the right, the left field line. That's going to land. Fisher will hold up at third, but a clean single for Brudick. That'll bring up Luis Montanez, our left fielder today for crunch time. No outs, first and third, and no score in the game thus far. It's going to be a fly ball down the right field line. It is staying oh. fair, and it does land fair. In comes Fisher. In comes Brudick. And to third is Montanez. That'll be a two-run triple and crunch time. Quickly out on top, two zip. Nobody out in the bottom of the first. I thought that was catchable. That ball was tricky. It was a shallow right field kind of dunker, hugged the line, and that gave Montanez the triple, bringing up Tina Nance. The left-handed hitter watches the first pitch, and the count moves to two and one. May, fast pitches, and it's a ground ball to the first baseman. He steps on home, fires it home over the catcher, mm -hmm. which is Linda Hiley, and a run scores. And the score is now three to nothing in favor of crunch time. That'll bring up your pitcher. We know him. We've seen him. And he throws heat. That's Ken Sabaki. And you look at the first pitch, and it's too high. An illegal pitch, that makes the count two and one. Sabaki looks at the next pitch and drives it down the right field line. That'll curve foul. And the count now two and two. Al, what's a pitch that's too high? Over 12 feet. And if you throw it too flat, it be, can be called a ball as well. So it, what, it has to go over the batter's head, is that it? Well, uh, approximately. Okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I figure most batters are about six foot. So if you get a little bit higher than that, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Sabaki in the batter's box. 3 nothing crunch nice time. Shot. He lines it down the first baseline into right field. And that'll be a clean single for Sabaki. Still, nobody out for crunch time. And that'll bring up Megan Call. And she nice lines it to shortstop. That's a great play by Candace Burke to backhand it to keep it in the infield. It'll be first and second for crunch time. And that'll bring up the team captain, Ron Osmondson. We've seen him a lot. Yes, we years. have. There are a lot of familiar faces on this Abnet crunch time team. Remember, they've won five, four of the last five. They're looking for five of the last six with a win today. And the first pitch is fouled off. Ron threw out the first ball in a Cub game the other day. At Mesa? It was a strike, yes. Very nice. And he lines this oh, solid hit. down the third base line. It's Trouble. deep, and it's going to go over the left fielder's head. And that's Jeremy Valentine. Osmondson rounding second, going for three, and he'll hold on there. But two-run score. And crunch time now up five zip in the bottom of the first. Crunch time, just keeping it going. That brings up Cindy Mejia. And lines it right back to May. He knocks it down over to first for one. Oh, it gets by the catcher, Haile. Two down, another run scores, and it's now 6 nothing in favor of crunch time with two down. That'll bring up our right fielder for crunch time, Jay Lemoyne.
It's a ground ball to third. A great pick up over to first to record the out. And what a nice play by Levi Breck. Over to first base, which is Jay Gerke, and they retire the side. But crunch time scores six runs on the bottom of the first. They lead six zip heading to the second inning. Second inning, and Vienna needs to get something going. Batting now is the catcher, and that is Linda Hiley. And she is safe at first with a leadoff single. And that will bring up the left fielder, Jeremy Valentine. Way to go, Linda. Yeah, way to go, Linda. First pitch from Samaki to Valentine is a shallow fly ball, and that looks like trouble. Absolutely, it will land highly round second going for third. She will make it. Valentine will take second on the throw, and Vienna has something cooking. Nobody out, second and third, and that will bring up Deborah Johnson. Deborah played in the CEO game today. She was the catcher for the CEOs of the Valley team. The winning, the winning CEOs of the Valley team. <laughs> Well, and Deborah looks at that first one to call it strike. They lost. One and two. They won 13 11 over extra. And she watched that one, and it's a quick strikeout. Deborah didn't like either pitch and will record the first out. That'll bring up the first baseman, Jay Gerke. Jay's a big boy. He looks comfortable in the batter's box. And Samaki's first pitch is stroke to left field. Underneath it is Luis Montanez. He makes the catch, records the out, tagging it second is Valentine. Hiley stays at third, and now it's trouble. The umpire says he's out at second base on the tag attempt, and that will retire the side. Vienna doesn't get anything out of it. And at the end of one and a half, six and third. nothing crunch time. The runner on third did not tag up. Yep. Just screwed that one up. That's exactly what happened. The runners were not in cahoots. Second base was tagging, third base was not. Second base released towards third. Third base stayed at third. We had a problem. And it wasn't the second guy that's tagged out at second. It wasn't his fault. Okay. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Crunch time with the commanding lead, 6 nothing. May still on the mound and coming up to bat is Brina Weissman. And May's first pitch is in there for a strike. Quickly, one in two on Weissman. And that will be one out for crunch time. That brings up our leadoff hitter, Chase Fisher. He's been playing shortstop this afternoon. And he got it all started for crunch time in the first inning. I've not seen him play before. So, looks pretty good. New player for crunch time this year. They have a couple of their regulars not with them this year. There's no doubt about it. We're missing uh, Becky Boozer Vasquez. We're missing uh, Belliard. We're missing a few of them. There's a short fly ball to left field. Could be trouble. It will drop. And that will get Fisher on first with a one out single. That'll bring up Tracy Brunick. I thought he was going to catch that ball. One down, Brunick in the batter's box, and Fisher on first. May still pitching. Will change defensively for Vienna. New catcher. They put Hiley in center. And it goes right up the middle. Great play by Candace oh, Brooke. Oh, the first play. double play. Candace Brooke, fantastic play. And I know that's not your last name, but a fantastic play by Candace Brooke. You don't see that too often. That was well done. And it retires the side. That means no runs on one hit, no errors, and it's 6 nothing crunch time as we go to the second inning. Third inning. Third inning. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> All right, and it's a leadoff single for Vienna, and they need some runs. That was Luisa Martinez, who just went into catch in the last inning, which brings up our pitcher, Aaron May. 6 nothing the score right now. Crunch time on top. Yours is way better. <laughs> Samaki's pitch. May drives it to the third baseman. That's Osmondson. A funny hop, but he still fields it. Over to first to retire May in time. But Martinez moves over to second with one down, and that'll bring up Nicole Getch. And a quick strike. One and two. Samaki's next pitch. And the fastball gets by her, and that's going to be two down. That'll bring up Dave Hendrickson. Dave's our DH today. He'll be batting from the left side of the plate, even though he's right-handed. Samaki's first pitch. A swing, and it goes right back to Samaki, up the middle to retire the side. 6 nothing. Crunch time, headed to the bottom of the third. Oh, stepping into the batter's box right now is Luis Montanez, and he flies this one into shallow right center. It will drop for a hit. He's making the turn and going to go for a two, taking advantage of the arm in right field. He'll make it easily to third for a leadoff triple, triple for crunch time. Leading six to nothing, stepping into the batter's box for crunch time is Tina Nance. I've seen her make some great plays today. Yeah, she's been playing her heart out, no doubt. Crunch times after their fifth championship in six years. Ground ball right back to May. Nice hands over to first. Digging it out for Vienna at first base is Jay Gerke. And quickly one down. Montanez stays at third. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Ken Samaki. Samaki has a World Series rating to that of Jack Morris. <laughs> and he lines it in the left center. Nice shot. Making the stop out there is Nicole Getch, and she gets it back in. The run does score. Now 7 nothing for crunch time with a man on first and one down. That will bring up Megan Cowell. It's a ground ball to third base. Clean fielding by Levi Breck over to first in time for the out. And now there's two down. And that'll bring up the third baseman for crunch time, Ron Osmondson, the team captain. And look at the first pitch. Quickly two and one. We're getting at the end of a, a long day, and the and men are He's going to look right at that now. three and one. So this is the last game for Coeds. The winners today go to a, get a D-back suite. Fly ball, left field, curbing foul, and out of play, and it's a full count. Second place team losers go to Don and Charlie. And that's hardly losing, Al. I don't think so. And that is not losing. Osmondson lines it into center field. Moving up to catch it is High Lee. She will not get there. It falls in between Brooke. Over to second. A run scores. And it's now 8-0. Osmondson will go to second. Two down. Eight zip. Bottom of the third. Crunch time. In command. And that brings up. Cindy Mejica, Mejia, Mejia, she wrote it, Mejia. <laughs> Good ball, Cindy, ground ball to third base, and it can't 
be hung on by our first baseman, Jay Gertke, and scoring is Osmondson. And she's out at first, and she overran the bag. And the run scored. The run does score, and it's now 9 nothing crunch time going to the top of the fourth. We go to the top of the fourth inning and back to the top of the order we go. For the Vienna team, it'll bring up our right fielder, Paul Denham. Paul's new to Arizona. He loves the White Sox. He loves the White Sox. Hates the Cubs. He hates the Cubs. We can't get that backwards. He gets upset. <laughs> <laughs> the first pitch from Samaki. In there for a strike. One and two. Samaki's so next pitch is an archer, but Denham's got a hold of that one. He lines it Good right shot. up the middle. It's a single, and he rounds first. He toys with the idea of going to second, but he would not have been wise to make that move. That brings up the shortstop, Candace Burke, who turned the double play in the last inning. A great play indeed. It was sweet. There's no doubt Candace has been on the diamond. Two and one. And a called strike, two and two. It's Maki's pitch, and it's a foul ball, and that's going to count as a strikeout. That'll bring up the third batter, the third baseman, Levi Brack for Team Vienna. Man on first, one down. They need runs. They're down 9 nothing here in the fourth inning. He's, a, he's over a talking... Stick. Levi Resort. Breck right to Osmondson. Tries to double up. Denham, but he's back in time. Two down. Great play. Ron Osmondson for crunch time, the team captain. Holding down the hot corner. That brings up our former catcher. Now she's playing center field. That's Linda Hailey. First pitch from Samaki is right Fair down enough. the line. Nice hit wow. by right Haile. And it's first and second with two down. She hugged the line with that one. She's two and two. That'll bring up Jeremy Valentine. He's been in left field today. First and second, two outs. Samaki's pitch. Valentine ropes it to the third baseman. Osmondson, and it gets through him. The bases are going to be loaded here with two outs for Vienna, and they need runs. That brings up our second baseman, Deborah Johnson. Was in our CEO of the Valley game today, and now she's in a crucial spot for Vienna. Two down, bases loaded, grounds it up the middle. Samaki makes the stop over to first, and that will retire the side. Tina Nance making a nice play. And Vienna gets nothing. They leave the bases loaded through four and a half. Nine nothing, crunch time. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The score is 9 nothing. crunch time, and they're coming up to bat. Remember, there is a 10-run rule in effect and a 15-run rule in effect. 9 nothing. Vienna needs to get in and out of this inning, and it's up to Aaron May, the pitcher, to make it happen. Batting is Jay Lemoyne, and it's a fly ball to the third baseman, Levi Breck, and that helps Vienna's cause. One down, and that'll bring up Brina Weissman. First pitch swinging, and it's one and two. Yes, 
and May just has that ball dancing all over the strike zone, and it's quickly two down. That'll bring up Chase Fisher for crunch time. Boy, do they need a one, two, three inning here. And Fisher lines it to left field. Underneath it in the left field is Jeremy Valentine. He files it in and retires the side. Still 9-0 crunch time as we go to the top of the fifth. Okay. We go to the top of the fifth inning. And leaving off for Vienna is the first baseman. That's Jay Gerke, ground ball, and that'll go right over the head of Tina Nance, and uh, Gerke will stay on first with a leadoff single. That'll bring up Luisa Martinez. Nobody out, Vienna needs runs. It's a ground ball, Osmondson's got it. He looks to second, but he's gonna go to first. A great dig, great dig by Tina Nance to retire the out. One down, man on second. Vienna still needs runs, and that'll bring up our pitcher for this afternoon for Vienna, Aaron May. First pitch is a called strike, and it's quickly one and two. And it's a strikeout. Samaki's got the ball dancing across that hitting zone. And now there's two down, man on second. And that will bring up Nicole Gitch. <laughs> Nicole swings at the first pitch, and it's one and two. Two down, man on second for Fiena. Trailing 9 nothing here in the top of the fifth. It's a ground ball. Salaki's got it. Turns, fires to Nance, and that will retire the side. No run scored. Still 9 nothing. crunch time going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Okay, and we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. That is our good friend Tracy Brunick grounding out to Aaron May to start off the bottom of the fifth. One down. That'll bring up the left fielder, Luis Montanez. Luis has been a mainstay for crunch time, Al. I remember when he first came out, and he was just one of the young guys. We knew he was good. Yeah. Right away. Now he's a veteran. And Montanez drives this into right center field. Johnson trying to get under it. It gets Byer. There's Paul Denham to make the throw into second base. Can is Brooke there? The throw's too late. Montanez with a stand up double with one down. Here comes the first baseman, Tina Nance. She's made some great plays today, playing first. They've been. Very solid, both sides of the, of the ledger. Tina looks at the first one, a legal pitch, a little low. Quickly two and one. And she'll watch that one too, and now it's three and one. Ground ball over to the first baseman, Jay Gerke. He grabs it, tags the bag for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up the pitcher, today's star for crunch time. So far throwing a shutout through five innings. That's Ken Samaki. Okay. You got to tell me these things. <laughs> right. <laughs> Samaki, the second baseman. She makes a great play. She throws it right over his head. And Jeremy Valentine cannot make the catch. And Samaki will stay at first with two down. Ball game. It's 10 nothing. And that's the 10 run rule coming into effect, and it is game over. Al, five of the last six years, the Avnet Crunch Time team has taken down the title, and they will go to a Diamondbacks game in their own suite. Yeah, Vienna 
Enjoy Don and Charlie's. Not a bad consolation prize at all. <laughs> well, great. They all came out. Umpires didn't have to make any tough calls. Umpires were solid. We never questioned one call, not one pitch. We would never question any of their calls. Never. Never. Never, just the one on third base and uh, that third inning. But anyway, um, we want to congratulate Crunch Time <laughs> on a fantastic job defending their title and coming back from a 4-1 deficit to beat the Arizona Cardinal team 5-4 and make it into that final game where they dominated. Congratulations, Albeck, Crunch Time, champions five last six years.